respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the first episode of The Mother of Loyalty with me, your host, Ahmed Ali. Now, Umm al banin occupies a very essential role within the religion of Islam for her being as one of the greatest ladies in Islamic history, so great that her life has to be examined thoroughly and in depth due to the numerous lessons which can be extracted from blessed life. The life of this highly regarded lady has been understudied, undervalued, and has not been given the recognition it deserves within Islamic literature. When it comes to the embodiments of loyalty, of sincerity, of patience, and of modesty, Umm al banin deserves to be ranked as one of the highest ladies and among the highest ladies in Islamic history. Fatima al kilabiya aka Umm al banin was born in the fourth year after Hijrah and died in the 64th year after Hijrah on the 13th of Jamad al-Akhar. So roughly, it's safe to say that she lived approximately 60 years. Now this great lady is buried in the land of Medina in a cemetery called Jannah al -Baqiyah. Now honestly, when we hear of the enormous sacrifices that this individual gave for the religion of Islam, one would expect that Muslims would flock towards her holy shrines in millions. Now, speaking of holy shrine, where is the holy shrine of Umm al -Banin? She has no holy shrine. For the people who are fortunate enough or lucky enough to go and visit Jannat al baqiyah in Medina. When you walk into Jannat al baqiyah just on your left hand, you'll see the graves of the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt alongside Umm al -Banin, salam. Peace and blessings be upon her. So we find that a huge disservice has been done to Umm al-Banin. For this reason, there is a crucial need for us to study her life, especially on an occasion like this, which marks the demise anniversary of this great individual. Tonight, I want to focus on several points. Number one, how is Umm al-Banin a descendant of the courageous? Number two, her life before getting married and after getting married, the importance of a noble family. Three important points I want to focus on tonight, inshallah. Fatima Umm al banin was the daughter of who? Was the daughter of Hazam al Kilabi. And she was also known as Umm al banin as we just mentioned. But why and what is the meaning of Umm al banin I'll talk about it br briefly right now and later on in the episode. But tomorrow's episode, inshallah, I'll emphasize on this more. It means mother of the several sons. Now we'll touch upon this why. Uh, her name was changed from Fatima to Umm al-Banin. But she was a descendant from a, a brave and a heroic family. In the Arab Peninsula, Hejaz, modern-day Saudi Arabia, her forefathers were known to be the bravest. What's also interesting, yet I barely hear anyone uh, speaking about this fact, is she that she too is also related to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam through some generations of the great grandfathers of Prophet Muhammad Abdul Munaf. So now we can realize where her bravery, her courageousness, and her patience emanated from. As I mentioned earlier, Umm al banin Fatima al Kilabiya was born in the fourth year after Hijrah, just after several years when men used to bury their daughters alive. And, you know, for, for different reasons, some may say that we have flourishing businesses and we do not want uh, women to interfere. Women cannot help us in, in a business. So what's the solution? Bury them. Others use the excuse of burying their daughters alive is, you know, women cannot help in a, in, in a battlefield you know, young girls cannot help in a battlefield. So what's the solution? Bury them. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings be upon him and his purified progeny, came forth and transformed the mentalities of the ignorance. He brought forth the Qur'an and placed a huge emphasis on the importance of women in Islam. He brought for, forth examples from history. For example, we have uh, Mary, Lady Maryam, the mother of Jesus. We have Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, and we have his wife Khadija and his daughter Fatima Zahra. Umm al banin 
was a culmination of this work as she embodied remarkable characteristics. Another reason, now this is the first reason why we, we should study the life of Umm al-Baneen. Another reason is that currently in our communities, our sisters, ladies, always complain that there is a lack of female role models uh, in Islamic history compared uh, to men. They seek a role model in parenting, in modesty, and in bravery so they can look up to. When people speak of such characteristics, they automatically go to the male role models or refer back to them, focusing on them. Not really, you know, not really keeping in mind that there are many female role models in Islamic history. Our sisters say that we men have 124,000 prophets to look up to as male role models. We also have, in addition to the 13 infallibles from Prophet Muhammad al Mahdi, may Allah his reappearance. So, in comparison to men, 124,000 prophets and 13 infallibles, male role models. Yet women, as they state, we have two or three, you know, Khadija, Lady Fatima, and Lady Zainab. And it's unfortunate some people don't really understand or, you know, don't really count Lady Zainab and Khadija as a role model. It's unfortunate or don't not uh, fully understand what their position in Islam. For, if it wasn't for these two individuals, Islam would have never survived. They say, ladies right now, and it's, it's, it's beautiful to say that, we want a woman, a role model, that can help us in our day-to-day -day life, that we can relate to and learn from. from. So we can say that we want to live our lives by the examples or by the principles this great individual set. Hence, when we examine the life of Lady Umm al banin peace and blessings be upon him, uh, upon her, Fatima al kilabiya there isn't an excuse for someone to come and say, I, oh, I did not know about the sacrifices of Umm al banin Oh, I did not know what Umm al banin did or who she was. There's no room for that. We give enough information, inshallah, I seek to fulfill this through uh, these episodes to learn as much as we can from Umm al banin When a young girl grows up, she needs that individual, a role model, that she can look up to, relate to as a young girl. And if she does not find that, her heart and life will be cultivated by others. So the solution is, is to cultivate the hearts of our young daughters and our young sisters with the love of ladies like Umm al -Banin. Now who was Umm al -Banin? What merits did she possess? What characteristics did she possess? And how did she enter the house of Imam Ali ibn Talib, peace and blessings be upon him? These will be answered, but after the short break, so stay tuned. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you to the second part of today's episode where we have been touching upon the early life of Lady Fatima al-Kilabiya, aka Umm al-Baneen. 
before the break, we touched upon some of the key points revolving around Umm al and her family. Uh, who was she the, the, the descendant of? But now, I want to touch upon some later on stages of the life of Umm al Who she was? Why was she called Umm al how did she enter the house of Imam Ali al-Talib alayhi salam? After the martyrdom of Lady Fatima al-Zahra, peace and blessings be upon her, Imam Ali al-Talib alayhi salam read in the will of his wife to marry her niece Amama. Now Amama loved Imam al-Hassan and Imam al-Hussein, Zainab and Kulthum. So Fatima al-Zahra realized her love towards them and told Imam Ali to marry her so she can look after her children. So Imam Ali married her and then married again and again. But once again, Imam Ali wanted to marry. He wanted a son to aid his own son, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, on the day of Ashura. So he went to his brother Aqil, who was a genealogist in the Arabian Peninsula, knowing every tribe and every uh, you know woman with, within the tribe having the information uh, about uh, genealogy. So Imam Ali Talib -Islam goes up to his brother and he says, I want you to find me a woman as a wife. Was that enough? Is, is that the only thing he said? Right now, when someone goes to, you know, up to uh, his sisters or his, his mother or he looks for a woman to be his wife, he thinks about beauty, he thinks about other things, that's not something bad. But if you put it as the only criteria, it's something bad. Because these things will vanish. The only thing that will really stay is the heart and the will of the individual you're looking for. Imam Ali Talib went to his brother Aqil and said, find me a woman from a strong, from among the Arabs. Choose a lady as my wife, someone who is a descendant of the brave Arab and can bear me a magnanimous and a courageous son. Aqil thought for a little bit, and he said, Fatima al-Kilabiya. This is the individual you're looking for. Right away, he told him. Imam Ali Talib salam then sent Aqil on his behalf to uh, propose uh, to Hazam, her father, on behalf of Imam Ali. However, it's amazing to consider and to think about how the line of Allah, the commander of the faithful, insisted on marrying a brave wife and in order to raise a courageous son. A wife who can bear him a son that will leave behind the legacy. When Al-Abbas entered the battlefield, people thought he was Ali ibn Abi Talib from the way he fought, from the way he entered the battlefield. Right now, when you ask someone, what is the legacy you want to leave behind? Some people say wealth, some people say our companies, some people say, you know, our families, but your true legacy is your son, your sons and daughters. When you walk into a market, or when you walk, especially right now in our centers, when you walk into a center and son of a great individual that helped around the community or someone that is great in the community. What do people say to that son? They say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rest your father in peace. So the legacy that we should seek is the legacy of choosing a wise wife to bear us a courageous and young man. This demonstrates to us that it's, there's a crucial need for a proper upbringing of our children. Both parents play a crucial role within the well-being and nurturing of their children. So Imam Ali Talib wanted us to learn that not always beauty, I mean, we, we, we can see a brave woman so she can bear him a magnanimous and a courageous son. Let us keep that in mind when we look for our future spouses, our future bride, if you will. The same night when Aqil, when Ali Talib and his brother Aqil were talking about this topic, the same night, Fatima al-Kilabiya, Umm al banin also known, saw a dream. She woke up in the morning and started telling her mother about her dream. 
Mother says, what did you see? She says, I saw myself in a beautiful garden and the moons and the stars are above me. All of a sudden, the moon came down and laid in my lap. And after that, four other stars came and laid in my lap as well. Now her mother was happy that uh, her daughter saw such a dream. You know, an individual, when, when we see such a dream, it's, it's something happy, it's something that, you know, it's, it's predicting the future of something good. But her mother did not know what this dream meant. So, as, as they were talking, her father, Hazam, walked in and he saw his daughter talking to her mother. He says, Aqil, the brother of Ayyubi Talib, the commander of the faithful, is here to ask for the hand of our daughter in marriage. Fatima right away went to her father and narrated the dream once again. He said, this is the manifestation of your dream, my child. Allah the Almighty has turned your dream into a reality and has granted you happiness in this life and in the hereafter. For you will be another mother for Imam al-Hasan, Imam al-Hussein, Zainab al-Um Kulthum. Right away she started tearing up. He turns to the mother. Now this is amazing to hear. I'll comment on this after I mention it. He turns to his wife and he says, do you find our daughter Fatima qualified enough to be Imam Ali's wife? Knowing that his, wife, that his house is the house of revelation, prophethood, knowledge, wisdom, courtesy, and good manners. If you think our daughter is good enough, then let us agree to this blessed marriage. Can we comprehend this for an idea? Let us pause for a second and ponder upon this statement right here. If you want to apply it to the 21st century, marriages, the first thing that an individual, if, if, if I'm going to propose for a girl, the first thing that comes to mind is a bank statement, how much money I have, and what kind of job I have, if I have a house or not. Focusing on materialistic things, not focusing on the individual's religiosity, now, such things, I mean, right now, in, in the 21st century, a marriage, just a wedding alone, costs from fifteen to $20,000. The honeymoon alone is another five to $10,000. An individual who has just graduated or has just gotten settled down in, in, in a good job does not have such money. So we have restricted ourselves from what Ahlul Bayt wanted us to continue. Now, what did, where in the speech of uh, the father of Amul Banin, do we see him mentioning anything about the wealth, anything about power? He said, is our daughter qualified enough to be the wife of Imam Ali Nabi Talib His wife said, by Allah, I trained her very well and I requested from Allah the Almighty to make her extremely happy. You can give the news to Ali Talib that we have accepted. Nowhere in this speech do we find them mentioning, does he have any money? We've seen Ali Talib from his first marriage with Fatima al Zahra, we've seen him having only a shield and he sold that shield to make the wedding. Right now, no one is mentioning anything about wealth because you have to focus on one thing and that's the individual's mentality, how they think. How will the opposite spouse play that role that nurtures our child? That's one of the most important keynotes to keep in mind when we are looking for the opposite uh, spouse. When Umm al Banin arrived at the house of Imam Ali Talib alayhi salam, she stopped at the door and requested from Imam Ali and her mother to go inside and she'll come back out quickly. Now her mother was in shock. Why, why is she doing this? She said, my mother, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later, but I have to go in. She was granted, she goes in. The first thing she does when she enters the house, she goes over to Lady Zainab. She goes over to Umm Kulthum, Imam al Hassan, and Imam al Hussein. She says, Do you give me permission to be your slave? Nothing more. A young wife, a young bride, right now, she, 
I mean, even at, the, at that time, she has many ideas. She has many aspirations in her life as a young girl. Yet she goes up to the children of her husband and she says, do you give me permission to be your servant only and nothing else? When the children of Imam Ali ibn Talib السلام, saw this, they began to refer to her, their respect to her went so high. They began to refer to her as their own mother. They would call her, O oh, Ummah, O oh, our mother. To that extent, Umm al Banin served Al al Bayt. She says, I don't want to be anything but a servant to you. Because she knew who these individuals were. She knew who Zainab was, who Umm Kulthum was, who Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein were. So, hence, through Umm al Banin and through Imam Ali choosing the woman that he wants to spend and he wants to raise his children and to bear him children, he wants to teach us a lesson to raise our children with God consciousness and to always keep in mind that the individuals, our children that we want to nurture must possess the characteristics of Ahlul Bayt whether a daughter, let her possess the characteristics of Umm al-Baneen whether a son, let them care, be characterized with the characteristics of Al-Abbas, of Imam Hussain be brave, stand up for the truth even if that means putting your life on the line which we'll inshallah get to touch upon in tomorrow's episode but before I conclude, I want to touch upon a few points it's very crucial for a man to choose wisely when looking for, you know, settling down in a marriage life for the rest of his life. Because the only victims in a bad marriage are the children. And honestly, let our sisters learn. And this goes for the, for the sisters as well. Choose the man that will aid you in raising a good family, a noble family. And our sisters must learn from the examples set by Umm al-Baneen and how to become a perfect woman, a perfect wife, and a perfect daughter. I would like to thank you very much for tuning in tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give everyone the ability to continue serving and learning from Ahl al-Bayt especially Umm al-Baneen. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.